I am Jimbo Paris, and you are listening to the Jimbo Paris Show. All right. What's up, people? This is Jimbo Paris here. Welcome to the Jimbo Paris Show. Today we have Joe Templin, a physicist, financial manager, and also startup founder. And he is a polymath, and he is a human Swiss Army knife as described by him. He has dedicated most of his life to helping people. He's a trainer, mentor, martial artist, and he has the number one Kindle release of a new release, professional development, everyday excellence. So very good, very good. And he's, he's showing it right there. Yes, let's bring him up. How's it going, man? Afternoon, Jimbo. Doing awesome, my friend. How are you doing? Great, great. What were you just showing there? So that is actually the hard copy version of Everyday Excellence. I obviously can't hold up a Kindle version. Okay, that's nice. You got hard copy cover. That's nice. So let's begin. So can you kind of give me a brief summary of who you are, what you're about, and what your message is? So I am, as I say, a human Swiss Army knife or... You know, uh, poly I hate the term Renaissance man simply because I cannot draw a straight line even with a ruler. And my, what I do is that I help people. I help people, whether it's through coaching, teaching, consulting, writing. It is all about helping people become better at who and what they truly are so that they can achieve their goals. Why help people? You know, it's just the way that I am. Uh, if you look back into the dawn of time when I was born and dinosaurs roamed the earth, as my kids say, um, my dad was an army officer who then went into consulting. My mom was a former nun who became a college instructor. And so if you look at these twin roots that I grew up with in a small rural community, you know, plus being one of six kids, you, we were raised to look out for others, to take care of others, to help, and to figure out our own unique skill set and voice with which to do that. Made me realize that even on a crappy day, my life's not that bad. I mean, I, I can, I'm still upright. I can take nourishment. I can have control of my own destiny in a lot of ways because I run my own business. So, hey, I want to, you know, earn more money. I pick up the phone or I get on the computer and start doing more marketing. There's no external force saying, you can't do that. You can only earn so much money or, you know, it doesn't matter that only like, you know, one out of 20 or 30 um, speaking engagements that I, I try and pick up, I end up getting, you know what? I can still keep trying. So there's nobody saying, oh, you're only allowed to try and get, you know, a certain number of speaking engagements, or you can only try and sell a certain number of books or help a certain number of people. There is no governor on me as a creator as a consultant, as a, as a coach. So there's nobody saying you can't help as many people as you want. And so that's one of the unique things about being in business with for yourself in a lot of ways is that you are paid on the value that you deliver to the marketplace. And there are few restrictions on the amount of value that you can bring out there because you know, there's somebody out there who could use a shot in the arm of confidence today. There's somebody who could use a little bit of skill set development. There's somebody who could use a pal on the back and saying, hey, you got this. You can do this. You can go on out and be more successful. So even if I'm having not a great day because something didn't come through that we had thought that was nailed down, so be it. You know, you pick yourself up, you dust yourself off, and you get back into doing the job. Mm -hmm. What was the first step to helping people? Well, there's really two steps. One, mm -hmm. there's a, a belief system that you 
have an obligation to help other people. And so that is something that very often is picked up from our environment, our parents, our relatives, our friends, you know, the how, who we spend time with in college and afterwards. So that environment of the mindset. And then the other component is you can't help people if you have no capabilities, if you have no skills. So I, my background is I was an applied physicist and built weapons for the government long ago and, you know, days of yore. And so I developed a very good mindset around analytics and being able to solve problems, which I then brought into financial services. Then I started adding on more psychology from uh, performance psychology, specifically from my martial arts and then sales psychology in terms of coaching and development. And so I have, as I said, all these skills and insights that I've been able to put together. And so if you can't create some value or something where you have a unique capability or insight or a product. So, you know, if you can't create something that is of value that helps other people out, I mean, you know, people buy books because they want to learn or they want to be distracted because it's, you know, mind candy. They're buying it for a purpose, either entertainment or education. So if you can't create a book that helps in one of those two capacities, guess what? You're not going to sell said book. If you can't uh, create a process of improving a uh, machine, you're not going to be a very good engineer. If you can't create computer code that does something of value, whether it's um, something that is more efficient in a business capacity or social media or entertain somebody and so gives them that dopamine hit. If you're not creating something that brings value to others, then you're not going to have very much worth to deliver to the universe. So mm. understanding and creating stuff, whether it's a better version of me or it's a knowledge base and tools for others that they can use to improve their world. That is one of the critical things on being able to help people. Uh, so what you're saying from what I'm understanding is creating value is a very important component to helping people to begin with, because you need to have that value before you can give it to others. Correct. Because you know, in the end, we all have 86,400 seconds in a day. I don't care if you're Bill Gates. I don't care if you're Elon Musk. I don't care if you're somebody just getting out of college. We all have the same number of seconds in the day. So if I am not adding value to that limited time period that somebody has, then I'm either neutral or I am actually destroying value and stealing part of their life. And th since that is the most valuable commodity we have, that wasting asset of our time, I'm not going to waste somebody's time. You know, if I can't bring value to them, I tell them straight up, look, dude, I'm not your guy. I can't help you. I can't make you better. I can't solve this problem. There's other people out there here, maybe call so-and-so or so-and-so. So if I can help them in that capacity, great. So I need to at least be neutral or better yet positive with Every moment that I'm taking from somebody, they need to get enough value out of it to be willing to make that trade. But that's not only having value, but you also see value in yourself as well. So that's another important component too, right? Yes. So, you know, and this is one of the things that you learn over time. Because, I mean, when we're 21 years old, 22 years old, just getting out of school, or even 18, you know, we've got the entire world in front of us, it seems. You know, there is an infinite amount of sand in the hourglass. Then. So the value of each one of those seconds is not nearly as apparent. But then when you start trading your time for money and you do something like clean toilets, like I did in college for a little bit, simply because I needed to make money. So that was the only job available at that point. Guess what? I did it. And I realized, you know what? This is not necessarily the best use of my brain. This is not the best use of my skill set, my mindset, and all that. And so I 
swam upstream for lack of a better term. I learned to become more valuable and to respect that. Now, while you're talking about your time, I'm getting a bit of a gist of this idea of why you're a human Swiss army knife, but more specifically, I'm interested to know your opinion here, but who do you think is, so if you had a choice between two things, would you be a specialist or a generalist? From what I'm getting, Swiss army knives are more generalist. They are, but here's the thing. Everyone thinks that, you know, it's a jack of all trades, master of none, but it's actually, instead of just having incredible knowledge in one arena and knowing absolutely nothing outside of that, it's having deep interrelated knowledge in multiple areas. So I grew up on a farm, so I understand, you know, the rhythm of the seasons and I understand how to hunt if need be. I know how to fish. I know how to plant. So I've got these, this skill set. You know, I have a deep knowledge in physics that gives me insight into how things work and to be able to ask mm -hmm. additional questions so I can figure other things out. I've got a background in finance and taxation. I've got a background in psychology. So instead of just having a tiny little bit of awareness across multiple things, what you do is you go deeper in certain areas where you have fascination, where it looks interesting. And that's just our natural tendencies attracting us. But as you go deeper in certain areas, you can then see cross correlations with other components. And so one of the things is that all too often people are stuck with the tyranny of the or. Do you be a generalist or do you be a specialist as opposed to the miracle of the and of let's learn all we can across multiple different parameters and see how we can cross pollinate those mm -hmm. ideas to be able to produce new ones and that is how we get original thoughts and synthetic creation in the world excellent excellent answer and you know to add to what you're saying there they usually don't use the full quote it's um from what i remember this shocked me too it's jack of all trades master of none but still better than a master of one so exactly that's, yeah, they, yeah 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 having a diversified skill set allows you to survive that situation much better you need to have an understanding not just of what you're doing but the ancillary areas and continuously improve basically become more excellent so that no matter what happens because change is inevitable if you are not resilient and part of being resilient is being flexible in terms of your mindset and abilities then you're going to end up the way of the dinosaur and all too often people are like okay i survived i deserve to have the reward as opposed to, no, I need to do a little bit more to actually earn it. And that slightly different mindset, if you adopt it and you push yourself just even a tiny little bit on multiple parameters every day, over a several month period, you're going to notice the difference in terms of your mental health, your physical health, and your performance at work. And if you keep it up for a couple of years, even if it's not you know, hard pushing, it's just continuously just trying to get a little better here, a little better there, you're going to out distance your peers tremendously. And unfortunately, some people don't want to do that because the, you know, in a lot of ways, it's like the bucket of crabs where when one's trying to climb on out and up, you know, the others are pulling them back down as opposed to supporting and pushing and trying to make each other better. That's quite interesting. And I think a lot of times, perhaps being a generalist can be seen as something that's very out of the order. Like when I see you, it's it's quite insane. You know, you're the president of a fraternity. You were a lead board member in a series of different groups regarding autism, and you're you're a man that does karate. You know, you do all these different things. Aren't you ever? Isn't there ever an inherent? fear in your head that perhaps focusing more on one skill is going to hamper the other skills. I think that's what a lot of specialists fear. Yeah. And, you know, there is a thing that whenever you choose something, you're giving up everything else. 
And so um, the next thing I kind of want to do now is let's take a let's take a glance at your website. I want to give you some some publicity here on my show because you know I think you're a great person. I like what you're doing. Thank you, Jimbo. So yeah, so take the uh, take the reins here, take the lead, and kind of just run through the website, kind of give everyone a gist of how to navigate, what to look for, those sorts of things. Okay. So the site is everyday-excellence.com. It was put together by my friend, Athena. And the logo actually comes from my background in physics. And Athena actually is all but dissertation PhD in physics also. So that is basically a diagram of creation of when you have high energy particles being spontaneously created in a vacuum it looks very similar to that and also mm -hmm. is reflective of the name of my publishing house jrrt one ring my initials are the same as tolkien's so one ring is has always meant something to me as well from the time i was a little kid i said i was destined to write and so that symbol is basically a symbol of creation which is reflective of what we do so um, let's actually click on down to the excellence blog because you know, people can go into like the shop if they want and buy copies of the book and all that. Um, podcast is where this is eventually going to live. But one of the things is that excellence, as we said, is a habit and you need to try and achieve it every single day. And one of the big things that people don't realize is that we, as humans, make somewhere around 10,000 micro decisions every single day. And as Colossus tells Deadpool and Deadpool 2, four or five moments, four or five moments, big moments determine if you become a hero or a villain. It's the four or five micro choices each day that we make that determine is our arrow pointed up or is it pointed down for the day? So in addition to having the book, what I did is I put out the excellence blog. So uh, scroll down, click on any one of those. You know, so what I did is I six days a week, I put up a micro blog where it's similar to the book in that it's got a quote and discussion. There's no action item and the analysis is meant to be very short. It's meant to be somewhat cryptic because I want somebody to go spend one minute, maybe 90 seconds reading, getting an idea that they're going to contemplate throughout the day. That's going to give them a slightly better attitude. That's going to allow them to make slightly better choices. So I tend to do a theme for the week. So this week was uh, rock lyrics. So, you know, I've got Judas Priest, Black Sabbath. Uh, here we've got Eric Clapton. I had Carlos Santana. So I'm pretty eclectic in terms of my musical tastes, obviously, but I chose a quote from Tears from Heaven, which anybody who's familiar with the song knows this is what Eric Clapton wrote when his son fell out of a window and died. And I could not even comprehend that sort of loss as a father. So the quote is beyond the door, there's peace for sure, and I know there's no more tears in heaven. Okay. On the other side of pain is success. Greater pleasure rewards worth sacrificing for. And so it's intended to give the reader just a shot of emotion and th feeling and thought that they're going to carry throughout the day. And then if there's music, obviously, I just put a YouTube link so that people can actually listen to the music because not... You know, almost any day could be made better with a little Eric Clapton. But right, right. Just say. Okay. So we've got all sorts of things. One week the theme was pirates. Another week the theme was space. Another week it was spring. Another week it was bullies when uh, Russia went to the Ukraine. 
So there's these themes that are woven through it where they're all related to it. Last week was rap lyrics, actually. And it is meant to just give you that micro hit of positivity, of reinforcement, of insight to help carry you throughout the day. And so passion resonates. Uh, somebody once told me that the thing that made them feel the most wanted was feeling wanted. So being passionate, expressing positivity, drawing the joie de vie, that love of life out and having it around these different concepts, whatever the theme for the week is in that particular quote, hopefully helps unlock in the reader. And even if they only spend 60 seconds reading this in the morning, it can have a differential effect on their day so that they are able to produce more, whether it's more good vibes, whether it's more positivity, whether it's more production in their office or in their work environment, whether it is having more emotional reserves to get through bad days with the kids or to have the difficult conversations with their significant other, whatever it is, allowing that individual to draw more forth from themselves, the more often that they're doing that, the better they are at it, the more passionate they become. They're living life with greater intent. And ultimately, they're going to enjoy it and have better results. So I'm glad that you actually decided to do that, Jimbo, because I don't get a chance to discuss the ideas behind the micro blogs very often. So thank you. My privilege too. So I think, you know, to kind of help close off this interview, I want to ask you, you know, another quick question. So are there any final words that you'd like to give to the audience? Any pieces of advice, wisdom, anything else you'd like to discuss? There's two things that or one little thing and then a conclusion really, is that we have within us what is known as the reticular activation system. It is the filter through which we look, look at the world. Some people look at the world through rose-tinted glasses. Some people look at it through, you know, the gray goth sort of idea that life sucks in all capacities and it's going to be that way until we die and that's the end of it. So we get to choose how we perceive the world. We have this constant simulation and we can either look to the positive side of it or the negative side of it. We can look at things as the glass is half empty or it's half full. We can see the problems or we can see the opportunities. And so what I would recommend people try and do is look at the world and see that it is an oyster. And you get the oyster and it like rubs it the wrong way. But that grain of sand ultimately becomes a pearl. And there are pearls in every situation that we encounter. If you can string together enough of those pearls, you're going to have a very rich life. So look for those pearls of excellence. Look for those opportunities in every situation, no matter how dark it appears. So that's the big thing. And then, Jimbo, I just wanted to say thank you for the opportunity to talk to your people. This has been a lot of fun, man. I had a lot of fun, too. It's a privilege. Awesome. So be excellent and grow today. And so to end this off, I also need to give a quick shout out to some of my exclusive sponsors. The first one being Six Figure University. It's run by Kemiana and Anne. And basically they're both hardworking entrepreneurs 
running the six-figure university, teaching you how to make six figures. One's a salonist, the other's an engineer, both of them teaching you to make salons and get into real estate. So again, go to their website, check them out if you want to learn a, few, a thing or two from them. And the next person we've got is LifeWork Systems. And essentially, they are extreme HR. They go in, help businesses, and just completely transform the business culture in a deeper sense where everyone gets to know each other, everyone gets to understand each other. And if you want to get some more details on this, contact us. Let us know. And we can give you insights on how to get in touch with them, on how to improve your own businesses. And then last thing, we have a new website. And this episode, as well as the next coming episodes, will be on our Roku channel. We're a full-end TV channel now, on demand. Check us out there. Awesome. All right. I'm Jimbo Paris. This is the Jimbo Paris Show. Thank you again for watching. Thank you for listening to the Jimbo Paris Show. 